Yes, we are going to be introducing and releasing our 2023 income and expense survey. And this one is going to feature the greatest number of participants and the greatest number of beds in our history. So it should be a really, really great data source that folks in the industry can use. This episode of the Student Housing Insight Podcast is brought to you by the generous sponsorship from BSB Design. If you're involved with the development or renovation of student housing, I really want you to lean in right now. Have you experienced construction delays and cost overruns because the architect, they just didn't take the proper steps on the front end of the process and it's caused delays on the other side of the process? What is it that Benjamin Franklin said? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. The architects, designers, and staff at BSB Design live by that statement. BSB Design specializes in purpose-built off-campus student housing, and they have over 50 years of experience in the multifamily industry. They've got a proven track record for creating innovative and successful student housing communities. But what truly sets BSB apart is their unique design process. And if you haven't gone through it, let me explain it. Unlike other firms, they conduct a a comprehensive one to four day charrette is what they call it. It's a very meticulous approach that allows them to identify and address any potential issues early on. And that's going to help eliminate the delays and really ensuring a smooth project. I personally had the pleasure of being involved in this process with a mutual client between mine and BSB, and I just really can't emphasize enough how beneficial it was. The on-site review allowed us to catch and resolve potential issues that could have caused some significant delays and headaches for myself, as I was the one involved with opening it up. And so if you understand student housing, you know that if you miss a delivery for fall move-in, It's going to add another year, if not two years, to be able to stabilize that project. So don't waste any more time with subpar architecture firms. Experience the difference with BSB Design. Visit their website at bsbdesign.com to learn more. We'll also put that contact information in the show notes. Welcome to the Student Housing Insight Podcast, where we are putting you in touch with the people who bring student housing to life. I'm your host, Wesley Dees. I'm also the CEO of Student Housing Insight. Yes, SHI is not only the name of the podcast, but it's a legit company that is focused on making student housing better by providing professionals in the industry a platform to share ideas and data, determine best practices, and a platform to just simply promote networking among the professionals in this industry. You can find out more by visiting our website at studenthousinginsight.com. So can you believe it is fall already? (laughs) Like legit fall. Uh, It's after September 21st, so it's officially fall. The pumpkin spice is flowing. The apple orchards are being picked. My son is is begging to buy every single Halloween decoration <laughs> when we go to Target. He can't help it. His birthday is uh, it's the day before Halloween. He was almost born on Halloween, but he came on the 30th. But anyway, it's super special for him. But yes, fall is here, and that means it's time for our annual preview of the fall conferences that are coming up. And there's several to talk about. Let me start by saying this is a little different than my typical fall conference review. If you're a repeat listener to this annual episode, uh, you're used to me doing interviews with the host of NMHC Student Housing Conference and the host for Interface LeaseCon TurnCon. And we're going to we're going to do that. That's absolutely going to be part of this. But I want to be cognitive to the fact that the the SHI audience, it's an international audience, and there are several conferences that are happening outside of the U.S. this year that I want to make mention of. But let's go through it, and I'll just, I guess I'll go in chronological order. All right, so first up is Sure Initiatives European Emerging Markets Conference. That is happening October 10th in Zurich, Switzerland. If you are not familiar with Sure Initiative, 
Uh, SURE stands for Student Housing and University Real Estate. They launched the first student housing conference in Canada, and now they're planning a flag in Europe. So congrats to to Brian Klebosch on doing that. We've had him on the on the podcast before and talked about the Canadian conference. So yeah, if you're in Switzerland, if you're in Europe, that's a, a fantastic place to be in, in October. So kudos to everybody that gets to go to that. So the next one is, it's the longest running student housing conference in the world. And that is the National Multifamily Housing Council's annual student housing conference. This year, it's going to be in Las Vegas. If you remember last year, it was set in Miami and it was canceled due to Hurricane Ian. I'll be attending this year's conference. In fact, we're going to be hosting a top golf event one evening. So if you're an associate of, a, of an ownership group or a management company or a development firm, you are invited. And if you have not received an invitation from me before this event, just email me at contact at studenthouseandinsight.com and we'll send that over to you. But anyway, getting back to this conference, this is my personal favorite to attend out of the entire year, not just over the fall, but the entire year. And again, I'm saying that's my personal favorite. That That's not to throw shade at any of the other conferences. It, it's just, it's that for me. The content at this conference is, is the most meaningful for, for where I'm at in my career. I come away with, from that conference, basically learning about things that will help my consulting clients and I get good information on what things are coming down the pipeline that will impact the industry the next five to 10 years versus just the next three to four quarters. So that's my two cents on it. As we've done before, I recorded a conversation with the two gentlemen who lead up the student housing initiatives for NMHC. That's Dave Borzos and Matthew Berger. But we do that to, to give this audience a sneak peek on what attendees can expect at this year's conference. So with that being said, let's go to that conversation. Well, Matthew and Dave, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks, Wes. It's really great to be here with you. Yeah, really. We look forward to this every year. You guys have been helping me out with Shop Talk for the past you know, year and a half or so. So having these monthly conversations, uh, I'm getting used to. <laughs> but it has been a couple of months since we really sat down and talked and certainly talk about, because I think the last Shop Talk we had was in July. And I believe registration for this conference had just opened up at that point in time. So I'm interested in finding out, you know, what's what is registration looking like from you know, from that standpoint, what's happened over the past several weeks. But uh, real quick, just to catch up for everybody, how's your summer been? You know, it's it's been great. I feel really blessed to have been able to spend some time with family um, and mix that in with, you know, continuing the work we do here at the National Multifamily Housing Council. But it's been a, a great summer and we're super excited to jump into the fall here. And Wes, I just wanted to pick up on what you said about Shop Talk. I mean, kudos to you. You've really... Uh, taking that and run with it, you know, it started out during COVID as a way to bring the industry together, but you've really been able to make sure that it's enduring and it's just a really wonderful resource for the industry. And I know Dave and I look forward to the small role we play each and every month. Well, thanks. And and yeah, it's, uh, I believe the industry as they appreciate it from everything that I've seen, but or at least what I'm hearing, maybe they're just telling me that to make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you guys play a huge, huge role in that. It may just be a five to seven minute segment at the beginning of it, but it's one of the main reasons I think a lot of people tune in. So I appreciate you guys doing that. Happy to do it. So I know there was some overseas travel and I think a little bit of golf that was played as well. Dave? We got to spend the summer in a couple of weeks in Spain nice. uh, with the family and then my daughter, uh, I'm, I'm a user of student housing right now. She's a sophomore at Clemson. So we, we got to go to South Carolina for, uh, to the beach for a little while. And then she shipped herself off and, and uh, is having a great time at Clemson so far. So we're looking forward to going down there and watching a game in September and continuing a, a, a good experience at a fun and, and really good university. Yeah, Clemson's great. It's 
it, it gets a little bit out of the way for some people <laughs> on game day, but it's, uh, you know, being in the Charlotte area and being able to get down there, it's a fantastic atmosphere. It's just a, you know, a little over a couple of hours to, to drive yeah. down there. Yep. Yeah. Coming from DC, I'm, I'm imagining you probably got to make a couple of connections to get into Greenville Spartanburg. <laughs> Well, guys, let's talk about the conference. We were talking earlier, and I think last year we were debating on you know what year this was, but this is the 20th year. That's correct? That is absolutely correct. We're so excited this year. It's a, as you just said, the 20th year. The conference has really you know, emerged into adulthood. You know, we started the conference um, when the industry was in its infancy. The industry is now, you know, fully fledged asset class within the commercial real estate. We couldn't be more thrilled to have gone along the tremendous journey that it's been. So I want to talk about the 19th annual. (laughs) (laughs) We we were not able to do it it last year. got canceled at the last minute thanks to Hurricane Ian because it was planned in Miami and it was... Both myself and my wife were really looking forward to it. <laughs> but, you know, you guys, I think, obviously had to make the right call on canceling that at, at the last minute. And, you know, when we started talking about this conference coming up, we said, well, there's one thing for sure. We're not going to have to cancel it due to a hurricane. And then last week, I read this title. <laughs> As everybody knows, there was Hurricane Hillary that hit the Southern California coast. And I read this title. I think it was... Friday of last week, Hillary headed into Nevada as its first ever recorded tropical storm. So, <laughs> Wes, you just can't you can't make this it. each other oh, last year. <laughs> you just you you can't make this stuff up. Um, you know, we we're just talking before we got on about you know Hurricane Idalia in Florida. So we do hope everybody down in Florida will be fine. You know, look, we hope that. This year, we'll be able to, you know, have a really great conference. It was just so disappointing to have to cancel it last year at the, at the literally the last minute. Uh, well, I'll definitely be uh, packing my umbrella and a raincoat, I guess, for, for this one. But, but all joking aside, you know, tell us a little bit about the dates and the venue for this year for anybody who hasn't looked at the website yet. Yeah, so it's October 17th to the 19th, you know, out in Vegas, and it's going to be at the MGM Grand Hotel. So it should be a really, really great venue. And there's, you know, great restaurants to be had in Las Vegas. Top Golf, for those who are interested in doing that during the evening, is there. And, you know, it should just be a really great event. It should be a lot of fun. Did you guys do two events in Vegas last year, or was it just Optech? We did Optech, and then we had our annual meeting there earlier this year. Do you think for, because I know Optech is going to be there again this year, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but for student housing, is that going to be a repeat venue for the years to come, or what are your thoughts on that? Next year, again, it'll be in October. I think two weeks earlier, it'll be at the Aria next year, so uh, nice. looking forward to That's a great venue as well, but I don't know if we've scheduled anything further out, but let's not go that far out in the future. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's dive in and talk a little bit about the the topics and special sessions that attendees can expect this year. The uh, attendees who have already registered were pretty excited about what we put together. And one of the things that we're Matthew and I were just looking at this morning was that we're running about ninety percent ahead of registration from a year ago. Oh, and fantastic. We were, we had a strong registration last year just before we had to cancel. So I do think that one, the venue, I think a lot of people like Las Vegas, the uh, topics and the sessions, as well as the networking, let's be realistic. And people go there to network as well, are all generating some level of excitement. In terms of some of the highlights, we asked Bill Bayless, and I don't think he really needs an introduction. Everybody knows him as an industry pioneer. And he's going to kick off the conference for us. He will be the opening conversation. He's going to kind of talk a little bit about his experience in the industry, where it started, where it is today, and where he thinks it's going. So a great way to get us started. Uh, We have a a number of other great sessions that we got a lot of really great feedback last year and a lot of excitement. So we've kind of recreated a number of those. We, again, I think we everybody expects uh, kind of a leadership conversation and panel. We'll certainly do one of those as well. And I think people are looking forward to hearing from the people that we've got for that panel as well. And then a lot of people don't know that we actually brought on a new president earlier this year, 
Sharon Wilson Genoa is going to be doing an interview with Sam Naji, who is the president and CEO of Marcus and Millichap. And so okay. we're excited about that conversation as well. They're going to share some insights. Good way for people to get introduced to uh, our leader here at NMHC. And then we also have a number of other panels covering ESG. We've got markets. I mean, clearly the capital markets have been pretty disruptive this year. So I think people want to hear what's going on there and what the outlooks are and whether the Fed's going to keep cranking up rates or not. Mm. So there, I th- do think that we're going to see some very interesting conversations and then also the ability to give people some great networking time as well, which because realistically, that's, I think, more almost more important than the topics they want to hear about. I wasn't able, obviously, to go last year. And then Huntington Beach, I had to skip out on the year before that. So I'm drawing a little bit of a blank. Do you guys have dual sessions going on or is everything basically a grand session for everybody? So it's a grand session for everybody. And so we just, you know, the room to go to, you uh, know, the topics we're going to cover in those. And so it is a run of show in, in the one main room. Great. Um, for any of the NMHC members who may not have you know received, a, or I'm sure they've received the email, maybe they didn't look at it. Is there anything specific for members that we need to make sure that they're aware of any kind of breakout sessions or special meetings for them? We do host one that, again, it's an invite only one where we started a conversation a number of years ago with a select group of Mm -hmm. C-suite members of our owner and operators uh, where we have a conversation with them kind of covering specific industry topics, et cetera, that helps guide what NMHC does and what we work on. It's also an ability for them to share some of their experiences, not in front of an audience. And so yeah, yeah. that's really kind of important. But let me kind of build on what you just asked right there. And that is NMHC, whether you're a member or not, and we hope that people are attending are considered to become a member, even if they're not now, we represent the industry. And so it's not only conventional, but student housing. There's obviously, there are differences and unique aspects of student housing, but there's a lot of similarities between operating and and managing properties for student housing and for conventional. And with that in mind, Matthew and I, besides wearing hats in terms of leading our student housing efforts, we wear other hats for NMHC along with our colleagues here as well. The regulatory environment right now is a bit strenuous for the industry. There has been significant pressure by the administration and looking out for and trying to implement tenant protections. There is a lot of pressure on rent control. There are examinations on what fees are being charged. So there's just this onslaught of regulatory pressures that we're dealing with right now. And we have been covering every one of those topics. We do communicate with the industry. We do communicate with our members. A little bit more difficult to communicate with those who are not our members, but recognize the fact that you know, we are here to advocate for the industry. And so while we are a federal facing organization, there are also uh, local issues that we deal with like rent control. And, you know, you don't necessarily think about rent control impacting student housing, but given the strength in leasing and some of the numbers that we're looking at, they would be impacted by local rent control laws as well. And there is even discussion at a federal level. So clearly really important and, Matthew and I, along with two of our other colleagues in government affairs, will be providing an update, kind of opening the first full day of the conference. And so we highly encourage people to come to that to kind of hear the issues that we're dealing with and what we're doing to try and advocate for the industry. And and last but not least, I'd also just mention we have a great emerging leaders event as well, where Donna Price will be interviewed by Teresa Zapata. So we're super excited about that. Now, I know that's a carryover from last year that didn't get to happen. So I've got a question because that's for everybody 40 and under. That's correct. If uh, they turned 41 this past year, did they get to go? <laughs> I think, you know, we're not complete sticklers. <laughs> You're not checking IDs at the door? You're not carding at the door. <laughs> Well, hey, I believe it was two years ago that you guys released the the benchmark report, which is something you guys have done several times throughout the past 20 years. 
And uh, I don't know if that's something you guys have got planned for this year, or if there's another white paper or something you guys are going to be releasing at, at this event. So I'm so glad you asked that question, Wes, because the answer is yes, we are going to be introducing and releasing our 2023 income and expense survey. And this one is going to feature the greatest number of participants and the greatest number of beds in our history. So it should be a really, really great data source that folks in the industry can use. And interestingly enough, on Wednesday during the conference, we're going to have a lunchtime speaker, Chris Bruin, on our NMHC team, who really is instrumental in pulling this income and expense survey together. Okay. He's going to do a lunchtime presentation, releasing some of the top line findings. Super excited about that. Fantastic. I know that's always kind of been broken out by region. I'm assuming that's probably going to happen again. Uh, as far as like, not necessarily asset class, but P3 versus completely private, or is it just kind of mixed all together? So this is only off campus? Only off campus private. Yep. But there's a breakdown by uh, building type and distance from campus and a number of those other elements, which I think people really look for. The other uh, other interesting aspect, which is I think really important that we've done the last two times, which is we provide the data in an Excel spreadsheet. So rather than a written report, which you have to kind of thumb through, Mm -hmm. people can download the information, not at the individual asset, but what's presented on a summary basis on those pages, but to the degree that they want to run some analysis themselves, they have that ability as well. Well, fantastic. Hey, I I want to go over and talk about Optech a little bit because this episode is covering all the conferences for this fall. But before we move on to that, anything else uh, as it relates to the student housing conference that you want to make sure everybody's aware of? I think we're just super excited to be hosting the conference and we hope that the entire industry will join us in Las Vegas in mid-October. Great. Well, let's talk about Optech. What are the dates for that? What are what's some of the details that you want to share with everybody regarding Optech? So if you want to spend... Halloween in Las Vegas. And just kind of think about that for a second. Halloween, Las Vegas. The conference starts on November 1. So those of you who need to take your kids out trick-or-treating can still do that and fly in that morning. But look, this is uh, really a, a phenomenally great conference. It is our second largest conference that we put on at NMHC. They always put together a great run of show. They're very creative in terms of what they do. And we always highly encourage everybody, even in the student housing industry, that you should not miss this conference. We tell every one of our COO members in student housing, you need to send your people to this conference. You know, it's a great mix of both the operations side and the technology side. And so if you kind of think about from an innovation perspective, et cetera, that's clearly front and center for a lot of people in their interests. Last year, we were probably 26 or 2,800 people registered. My guess is we will easily meet that and and likely exceed that number. So it has grown its importance and clearly is is something that we all get excited about. And Matthew and I will definitely be there as well as part of that conference. So the team here is furiously working on that, and as well as the fact that we're already working on our annual conference as well. So it's kind of a nonstop in the fall for us. Yeah, some of the conversations I've, I've had with folks about the student housing conference as well as Optech, and I've actually been kind of surprised at the number of people that have said, yeah, I'm going to go to Optech this year. <laughs> yes. And it's not that they, they want to you know miss Optech or excuse me, want to miss the student housing conference. It's just they've got some major decisions coming up this coming year on technology that they're going to absolutely and, and that type of thing. And so that's making it a huge priority for them. That's one of the very few conferences throughout the year that I feel like everybody from both prop tech, fintech, kind of all in one place that, you know, we can sit down and bounce ideas off of each other and kind of get some real clarity around what it's going to take to move into the next five to 10 years of this industry. So, so glad you guys are doing it. So glad to see how that has, um, uh, that, just like the student housing conference, I went to the first Optech conference too. So there you go. <laughs> I ended up being in Atlanta and it was actually a pretty big deal then too. So. Well, guys, I think that pretty much covers it. Is there any other conferences you guys have coming up this fall that you want to make sure the student housing audience knows about? The one other thing that, again, this is for 
really NMHC members. You know, we do a lot of webinars. We do sponsor women events uh, within the industry. We do run emerging leader meetings around the country. There's a lot of research and research webinars and podcasts that come out of NMHC. So there's a wealth of information and data that we put out on a very regular basis that supplement the conferences, the in-person conferences that we do as well. But all these, again, are accessible only to NMHC members. So to anybody who's listening, who's not, you definitely are missing out on what I consider to be a significant amount of available resources that will only kind of make your businesses better. Yeah. And just to plug the membership one more time, I mean, yes, it is an investment and I certainly see it that way, but dollar for dollar compared to the other places and associations we have to put our money towards in this industry, you guys give the best value. That's just my observation. <laughs> Maybe other we people feel differently, that. but not only the resources that you guys give and the events that you put on, but just the resource when someone has some type of legislative issue that they're trying to get their arms around, you guys are always there for the members. And I want to say thank you for that because there's been a lot of over the past, I know we've talked about it before, but you know, through this pandemic, there was a lot of operators that were really having to lean on you guys and appreciate it so much for all the effort that you guys put into that. That means a lot. I mean, we really work every day to make sure that we offer, you know, the membership, the highest ROI possible. We take nothing for granted and just want to serve the industry. Well, guys, I'm looking forward to seeing you in October. And likewise, my friend. We'll also talk on, I believe it's September 14th, I think is the next shop talk. So probably about a week or so after this comes out. So guys, take care. Again, big thanks to Matthew and Dave for for their time and everything they do to support this industry. They have been fantastic to work with and think a lot of certainly them personally, but also just National Multi-Housing Council in general. They've been a fantastic group to work with. So uh, moving on to the next conference in the lineup, the same day the NMHC conference ends on October 19th, another European conference is happening in London. That conference would be the Global Student Living Conference. They set this up kind of as like four events or four tracks. That's not right. There's like three tracks, but it's like four events in one conference. And so there are three different tracks, as I mentioned, that happen you know, for this. I think it's just one day, but there's three tracks that are happening. The first one is, I shouldn't say the first one, but one of the main tracks is the GSL Investor Summit. There's panels. I believe there's some workshops that are within that track. And then you have the net zero student living track, which if you heard our recent episode on ESG, you know how big net zero is in the UK. My co-host for that episode was Daniel Smith with Student Housing Consultancy, which is also located in the in the UK. He'll be a big part of that event. So if you go to it, make sure you say hey to Dan for me. The third is Strategies for Wellbeing, which has a big focus on resident life and developing community. Again, like I mentioned, each of these tracks have workshops and keynotes, but the day is capped off with this fourth event, which is the Global Student Living Awards, specifically for the UK and Ireland. If you pay any attention to the PBSA industry in Europe, you know how big these awards are. It is highly competitive, and there is a lot of excitement built around it. If you're a fan of LinkedIn like I am, and you're <laughs> you're connected to folks in the UK for two or three weeks, you'll be seeing post after post of all of the all of the awards that they took home. So, but you can find out more at the website for Global Student Living, which we'll put in the in the show notes. I believe it's GSL dot news or something but anyway we'll, we'll put that in the notes okay next up is an event in toronto canada i mentioned the sure initiative did their first conference in canada and this is basically that same conference but it's focused on the eastern canadian schools whereas their western canada conference that was in vancouver back in the spring when i interviewed brian and, and some other speakers at that event 
This one is solely focused on Eastern Canada. I went to this conference the first year that they did it back in 2019. This conference has really only got better. And, and, you know, regardless if you're a developer or a supplier to the industry, you need to put an eye on Canada because there is massive, massive potential as we look at the way enrollments are just skyrocketing at those institutions. There's not a lot of new institutions popping up and they're very spread out. So a lot of great things going on in Canada. So if you and your firm can work in Canada, certainly, certainly take a look at getting to that conference. It's going to be November 15th through the 16th. And I believe it's at the University of Toronto, which is where it was at in 2019. It was a great, great venue. All right. So I mentioned that NMHC is my personal favorite to attend. But this next one is the most important to the industry. Uh, At least that's the way I feel. So why is that? Well, for one, it takes place 30 minutes from my house. (laughs) That's one reason. But the main reason is it addresses really the two core areas of student housing operations, leasing and turn. Leasing student housing is completely different from any other rental housing because it's based on this academic cycle. And then at the end of that cycle, or some may say at the beginning of that cycle, is summer turn. So, you know, if you don't have a good grasp on on how to build a a leasing and marketing strategy based on the the academic cycle, and if you can't successfully turn 60 to 85% of the bedrooms in a five to 10 day period, you're not going to last in this industry as an operator. You know, maybe you can do something else within the industry, but you're not going to last as an operator. (laughs) So that is the reason the most important conference to this industry is LeaseCon TurnCon. If you haven't heard of it before, it's hosted by the team at Interface Conference Group and France Media. That's the same team that provide the Interface Student Housing Conference in Austin each year. And they're also the publisher of Student Housing Business Magazine. And this year's conference is going to be, as I said before, it's going to be in Charlotte, December 4th through the 5th. And I recently got to sit down with Rich Kelly from Interface and asked him what is on tap for this year's conference. So let's take a listen to that discussion. Rich, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you, Wes. Good to be back. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. This is kind of our second half of the year, touching base to find out what's happening with LeaseCon, TurnCon. So I'm excited to talk to you about that. But really quick, just kind of a wrap up from Interface back in April. I thought it was fantastic. What were your thoughts? Yeah, it was a great three days. Things have only gotten kind of more interesting in the industry since then, I think, in terms of the investment market was kind of stalled at that point. And obviously, it's been really stalled since then. Leasing was going along really well at that point and continued to go along really well as we finished it out. Yeah. So, you know, we head into this fourth quarter, which is traditionally a, such a busy time for investment sales. I'm not sure that's going to be happening this year. So it may yeah. be that it winds up being first quarter of next year, which will actually set up well for, for Interface next year. But yeah, no, it's exciting. You know, new school year, starting up, kids back in school, back in student housing, on campus and off campus. So I know it's been a really challenging last month for the industry with turn and getting buildings prepped and and students moved in. But uh, now we can take a deep breath and get fired up for a new year. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. We're And by the time this podcast comes out, it'll probably be over, but it'll be available on our YouTube channel. But we're we're doing on September 6th, a, a kickoff to leasing webinar which uh, we've done in the past, but has typically been like the last week of September, maybe even middle of October. (laughs) And so now we're doing it the first week of September just because everybody was like, hey, we're going to be past this if we wait until October. So, But um, let's jump on LeaseCon TurnCon really quick because this is also something that I don't think we've had it on the schedule this early. And you guys made an announcement, I think about a month or so ago, I know a lot of people are talking about it and are excited about it, but just really quick, kind of give the audience an overview of what LeaseCon TurnCon is and the dates and and, um, all that good information. Sure. So, yeah, this is our fifth annual LeaseCon TurnCon. We changed the kind of the moniker of the event a little bit this year to helping student housing operators navigate leasing, marketing and turn. 
So that sums it up pretty well, what the event's about. We talk about what's going on in leasing and different leasing techniques and just overall leasing strategies. Same thing really with marketing. Obviously, they're, those two are very t- intricately tied together. And then on the turn side, supply chain's finally gotten a little better. So that's a good thing. But you know, there's always new turn technologies. There's new strategies. Do you try to do turn from a centralized basis? There's a lot of different things to talk about. So, you know, over the course of the day and a half, we start on December 4th, Monday afternoon with roundtables, which rolls into a session and then rolls into our cocktail party. This event has evolved over the over the years to the point where now a lot of companies do dinners or parties on that first night of LeaseCon, which is really cool to see. And then we come back Tuesday morning with a full day from 8.30 to 3.30 kind of thing, a mixture of panel sessions, smaller roundtables or focus group discussions, which is kind of neat, and a lot of networking time as well. So this is a fun event. Everyone, I think, is in a pretty good frame of mind when it comes to what's going on from their leasing. So that's great and should form the basis for some some interesting discussions. Yeah, it's, and, you know, we were talking about this on something we were discussing earlier, but the timing, because I think when you guys started this out, we were doing it in September. It was a great time because everything is being kicked off or has traditionally kind of been kicked off at that point in time. And so it was a good time to kind of regroup with the rest of the industry and say, okay, we've got these marketing plans together, but, you know, does this, does this make the most sense? If things are starting so much earlier and what I liked about having this last year in December was especially that first week in December is it really just kind of gave everybody a chance to because they've already started the leasing season. Some folks had even finished their lease <laughs> season by the time they got to Thanksgiving. But it was, you know, that's typically the week, you know, right after exams or, or right when exams are happening and everything is kind of just really chill as far as what's happening on campus and there's not you know a lot of outreach that even needs to be done at that point in time so it's a great time for everybody to unplug if they're at the site level or you know at that regional support level come in with your colleagues across the industry and not only talk about some of these new things i know we've got some stuff that we're talking about on centralization and and ai and, and that type of stuff but also, just to you know, network and kind of talk about, hey, what have the last eight weeks been like for you? I think it's a perfect week from that standpoint because it's not completely into the holiday rush at that point. So, so it's it's December fourth and fifth, and there's also a early bird special that you've got in place. When does that end, and what's the what's the rates for that? The early bird rate is in effect until October twenty seventh, so that's two months away. The rate is three ninety five. After October twenty seventh, it goes up to four ninety five. I will say that you know one thing that we really try to do with this event is get people to bring uh, multiple members of their team or a, a large part of the team. So we do have re- registration incentives if you want to bring four or more people that the rate drops dramatically. And if you wanted to bring you know eight to ten people, which we've had a number of companies do over the years, you know we will really try to help and incentivize on that front. You know ideally, this is an event that's great for your your top management, but it's also great for your regionals. And if you could bring a couple of your folks in the field, I think it's a really nice perk or thank you that you could offer to them to have a chance to come to an industry conference and hear a lot of great information and meet some people and, and have some, uh, have a, just an overall really great experience. So yeah. we hope that companies will, you know, not just send one or two people, but send, you know, three, four, five, six, and, and really make this a very vibrant, exciting event. Yeah, no, I think this is a this is perfect for someone at the general manager level, even the leasing manager level. So, yeah, please, please think about that if you're looking at bringing multiple people for sure. I think it's a good time for companies to get together. You know, if they don't have some type of annual holiday party or something like that, it's a it's a good time to kind of bring everybody that you wouldn't necessarily see. You know, at that time of the year, so. All right. So we covered the group rate. Let's talk a little bit about sponsorship and vendors, because I know we've got a lot of companies out there that are, you know, really starting to get a lot of benefit from from this event. And what's kind of the process with that? What is the exhibit hall going to look like? That type of thing. It's not necessarily an exhibit hall for this event. It's more, you know, kind of the tabletop exhibits. But Mm -hmm. if your niche in the business is interacting with folks on the owner operator side who are involved in leasing, marketing or turn, this is a great event to be at because you're going to see all those people there and have a chance to talk to them and spend time with them and get to know them better and, and, and touch base with them. So we've seen uh, a growing you know, sponsor base for this event over the years. And really, as we market the event and we market the event pretty extensively, 
every time we market the event, the sponsors are getting marketed to your, your logos there, your logos in the ads, it's in the emails. You also get complimentary registrations as part of your sponsorship. So there's a lot of value branding and visibility and exposure before the event. And then also on the day of, so it's kind of like a two pronged effect. And yeah, we, we, you know, we've seen a lot of interest from folks on the furniture side, firms that specialize with marketing and SEO Mm -hmm. and tours, virtual tours, things like that. So we look forward to having a robust group with us in December. Well, fantastic. And should they just reach out to you on that or to yeah, Tim? They can reach out. They can reach out to me and my colleague, Tim Tolton. Absolutely. Okay. Great. We'll put the contact information in the show notes. Well, again, this whole episode is about the fall conference lineup. And we talked to Dave Borsos and Matthew Berger from NMHC. Anything else Interface has coming up you know, this fall that folks may want to take advantage of? Yeah, well, thank you for asking. We have a big Interface Multifamily Texas event on October 2nd, and that's covering kind of the conventional multifamily side. Mm-hmm. We do see some of our student friends who are at that event because certainly some student players also participate in conventional multifamily and vice versa. So that's okay. in Dallas on October 2nd. And then we have our big Interface Multifamily Southeast Conference on November 30th, again, the multifamily Texas gets folks from, you know, DFW, Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. And the Southeast event draws folks from, you know, Atlanta, Florida, the Carolinas, Alabama, Nashville markets. So, you know, both of those regions are probably the strongest multifamily markets in the country right yeah. now in terms of growth. Certainly the multifamily market has a lot of questions out there as well. Actually, more it's more challenged, I'd say, right now, certainly than student is. Yeah. But that means there's plenty of good stuff to talk about. So those those events should be good. Well, great. Well, fantastic. Well, hey, I appreciate you joining us today. And we'll see you certainly in December. But I know we'll also see each other in a few weeks in, in Vegas at the NMHC event as well. So we'll we'll talk to you more then. Sounds good. But before I, uh, you let me go, Wes, I have to turn and ask you a question. Turn the tables on you here. <laughs> go for it. All right. What are you hearing? What do you think this leasing season is going to be like? So it's interesting, uh, you know, we I mentioned we've got this webinar that's coming up next week and we had the preliminary meeting yesterday between all the panelists and and I was asking them that same question as well. And really uh, on velocity, everybody is kind of anticipating the same early start, maybe even a little bit earlier, especially in those markets like Knoxville and Athens. When it comes to rents, there is a definite feedback about Austin, Texas, and specifically West Campus of we're not going to be able to push rates. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think they've got a total of 5,000 more beds that are coming on between this year and next year. And we had a little bit of a discussion of, okay, here's what we're seeing on the multifamily conventional side of, you know, not being able to get rent growth. We saw a lot of stuff in the press, you know, in the past couple of weeks about how well student housing has outperformed conventional this past year. But at the same time, it's always a market by market thing. You can't make this statement and say this is going to be the case across every single college market. But for sure, it's one of those things where the student housing industry tends to trend right behind the conventional. A couple of folks said they were still planning on eight, nine percent increases. And the specific person that said that has very core plus type of assets and and great flagship markets. And I think I think they're right. I think they'll probably be able to get really close to that. But others are just kind of waiting back to kind of see how the the market reacts. They're definitely going to come out of the gate with some increases, but their feeling is they're probably not going to be able to push it as much as they did this past year. So, so yeah, we'll see. But folks are excited. I'm looking forward to talking with um, with Matt Pavlov from Grow at LeaseCon because there's been some things on the TikTok front that have changed over this past summer. And now that's something he's recommending to everybody in specific markets. That's only going to continue to improve. And so excited to see what he has to say about that. And yeah, I think everybody is uh, pretty baked in with their budgets at this point and ready to get going. Yeah, well, it should be interesting to see. Well, I'm excited about it. Excited about what we've got coming up this fall with both with you guys and NMHC. And we'll talk to you then. Well, thanks. And thanks for this opportunity, Wes. Much appreciated. All right. Take care. You too. Again, a big thanks to Rich for, for his time, for sitting down with me and having that discussion. That 
does it for the conferences that are coming up for this fall. This winter in January, there is the IMN Student Housing Conference in Dana Point, California. I'll provide a, a link for that one as well. So what what next? Because <laughs> I want to give you a little bit of value and insight here. After all, it is called Student Housing Insight. So I always get the question when it comes to conferences, you know, so Wes, I, I can only go to one conference. Which one should I go to? You know, that all depends on what you want to accomplish, I, I think is primarily the most important thing. Now, let me just talk about conferences in the U.S. If you live in Europe or Canada, I can't really speak to those and and provide a recommendation. I like everything I'm seeing from those that are happening, but you know, find someone that's going to that and, and get their recommendation. So I, I'll say this if you're on the operations side of the business. Just get to one conference each year and do whatever is easiest for your schedule, but get to one. And that's that's for everybody from, from site level to C-suite. Make sure you're getting to at least one. Now, if, if you're on the deal side of the business as a, as a broker or a lender, a biz dev person, or if you're part of an ownership group and you know you're thinking about buying or selling in the in the next 12 to 24 months go to the interface conference in Austin is typically each year in April if you've got to only go to one do that that is you're going to get the most benefit out of that one for sure if you're an executive on the operation side, I think you'll probably get the most out of the NMHC conference, and I won't go back into the details as to why I think that's important, but that's probably the one you're going to get the most benefit out of. Of course, if you're at the site level or if you support a, a region of, or maybe a portfolio of properties, you'll get the most out of LeaseCon TurnCon for sure. There are also two other conferences that happen throughout the year that I want to hit on uh, here for just a second. One being the the IMN conference in California uh, that I mentioned earlier, and then the the other one is the Biz Now Student Housing Conference that happens in Philadelphia. That typically happens in June. This year they did it in July, and that should tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, you know, why would you do a student housing conference in July? And I will tell you, that was my response to them when they asked me to be involved with it. I really love the guys at, at BizNow. It's a, it's a fantastic organization, and I'm glad that they do that. But hopefully they take my advice and they're not going to do that in July again for sure. And look, I don't want to discourage anyone from going to those two conferences. If it's convenient for you, you should go. But I just I want you to understand those companies produce networking events. And you might say, well, well, so does Interface, Uh, granted, but they also produce Student Housing Magazine, which is a huge asset to the industry. NMHC is a, you know, a membership lobbyist group for the most part. And uh, what I'm trying to communicate, I guess, is, is those companies are invested in our industry. It doesn't mean you should not go to the other conferences. I'm not saying that. You'll certainly see me there. But you need to understand the quality of content is going to be very different. The purpose of those events is all about networking. And if that's your goal, by all means, you should go. So anyway, that's my two cents on it. If you think I'm wrong about that, you can always send me an email at Wes at studenthousandinsight.com. I will read it. I promise. And happy to have a dialogue about it. But anyway. All right, that's it for this episode. Please share with your colleagues and give us a like on whatever platform you're using to listen to us. I'm told that we'll get the podcast in front of more people, but who really knows? Quite honestly, I just like seeing the thumbs up and the comments. So so go like, go comment. And if I've brought you any value, please, please, please share it with your colleagues. All right, everyone, take care and we will see you next time.